Africa. It's a happy Africa Day, 7 o'clock, bright and early uh, this morning. Good to have you with us here on ENCA. I'm Gareth Edwards. And as you can see, we're not alone this morning. Every Wednesday, we do, of course, have a special guest joining us for a full hour. And uh, none other than the member of parliament, Mr. Pongani Mwakwa. Good to have you with us. Uh, this morning, uh, good morning. Happy Africa Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Oh, good morning to you and Gareth, and happy Africa Day to you. Happy. And we see you have, you know, come bearing, you know, warm fur for, for, for the day, for the weather, for the studio. I don't know, I just, I just feel you, like are you fresh there's from an Davos? effort. It looks, like you come from, it looks like you come from Davos. <laughs> no, no, not really. I don't come from Davos. I, I came from Siabuswa, mm. where I originally come from. Uh, there's a lot we're going to talk about, but I think just before we get to uh, where you are uh, politically at the moment, where you are in your career personally, we're going to talk about that throughout the hour. Africa Day for you, just want to get your thoughts. Uh, you wake up on the 25th of May, Africa Day. What does it uh, mean for you? What do you think of? What's the first thing you think of? No, it's, a, it's a very important day, uh, particularly for, for the people of South Africa. And uh, what we've done uh, and where I'm going here from now, we are addressing an investor of Limpopo. Mm. We, we have organized that there should be choirs that sing all the anthems of the African countries so as to celebrate Africa. Because you will note that uh, we have quite a number of challenges, uh, the issues that, uh, of xenophobia, mm. issues of undocumented migrants that are in this country. So um, this day, calls upon a reflection to South Africans and all our African brothers to reflect about how do we build a contribute towards building a better South Africa. Mm, mm. a better Africa and a better world. Mm. Right. And we know that in the same year this year, I mean, we've just commemorated our 25th, or we still continue to commemorate uh, the 25th year of our constitution. You know, the minister, Ron Lamola, very generous to bring us uh, some, you know, the constitution book. So, so where does that place us, especially in this commemoration of the constitution as South Africa in the, in the continent? I mean, wh what lessons should we, of course, be uh, conscious of as a country? And where does it place us in our continent? I think the, the celebration of the constitution is uh, also a very important uh, thing in the sense that you will know that the uh, majority of South Africans died for us to enjoy the constitution that we have. The, the ruling party had spent uh, since its formation in 1912, mm. 83 years, fighting for that document to be a document that is uh, a universal document adopted and um, running the, the country and we're almost 28 years uh, down the line. So we've got to make sure that we, from time to time, remember that document mm. in the light of what is happening in this country, the issues surrounding ra racism and so on. So we've got to make sure that the document reigns supreme mm. and citizens are, from time to time, um, educated about the importance of the, the constitution in the republic. I'm going to ask you to put uh, your, your home affairs hat on for a moment as well. Uh, just to get your thoughts on Africa Day, you mentioned uh, we need to fight against xenophobia. Uh, we need to celebrate South Africa and Africa. How do we get on top of what seems to be uh, xenophobia uh, in certain areas spiraling out of control? How do we talk about our African brothers, but at the same time, we seem to be quite critical of, of having them in the country. It almost seems to be uh, a, a contradictory of each other. How do we do that on Africa Day? It's not necessarily a contradictory to each other. What we have said, uh, and we're still saying, is, is home affairs, and is that uh, we don't have any problem with a person who comes to reside in South Africa, um, who's coming from any African country or elsewhere in the mm. world, as long as uh, you are documented mm, mm, because mm. Uh, a lot of South Africans are staying in many more countries. Uh, if you go to a lot of countries, you always find South Africans. So the cry that we have is that if you come to the country, you must be properly documented mm. so that we can know, we can arrest you, we can uh, have account, we must have your fingerprint so that if anything goes wrong and we are in this country, we are able to to know about your, 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 your here about. But other than that, when municipalities and government does um, the planning, planning must know how many people are found in the city of Joburg, mm. how many people are found in Dr. J.S. Moroka, for instance, uh, where I come from. 
it will be absurd if the municipality will do a planning plan for only 5,000 people. Mm. I want to find that the people are 15,000 mm. and they are non, they are non documented uh, residents who come from the nearby countries. That makes residents very angry. Right. And we've got to make sure that we deal with that and everyone must be documented so that we know about your being here. If you are doing business, you must know you're doing business. If you are studying, you are studying. If you are here to look for any other opportunity, mm. we must know as government. Mm. But if we don't know, residents will be upset and then you will see people being attacked and so on. And we've got to, with the speed of a mirage, attend to the problem of documentation, which I think, in my view, is the one that we must prioritize. So, so with that being said, do you think Africans respect the laws of South Africa? You did mention that South Africa has absolutely no problem uh, with anyone working, uh, residing, being educated in South Africa for as long as you are documented, so you can track the whereabouts of that individual in a country. Every country has those laws, by the way. This is not just South Africa. Uh, it's not just unique to South Africa. But do you think Africans respect South African uh, laws in that regard? There are quite a lot of uh, Africans who, who respect our laws, and there are also quite a number of them who do not respect our laws. Um, there are a number of reasons why the, this is happening. Key amongst is the, is the porous nature of our borders. I have visited the, a border, mm. a Bay Bridge, and I've also visited the border around Swaziland and Mozambique. What I, I found was the, that actually in, in the Swaziland there is just a gate that separates us between Swaziland. Uh, in Mozambique... Mm. And you could almost walk through. Mm. In, in if in you the knew where to go, you could just walk through. In the Mbuzini area, mm. the, the cows from this side are eating from the other side mm. and vice versa. Mm. In Bay Bridge, I literally saw people jumping the river where there are crocodiles and so on. Mm. When we ask some of them, they're saying they're looking for economic opportunities, but we're not saying they must not do so. But what we're saying is that uh, that thing must be done in a formal and an orderly way so that the laws of the Republic are properly respected. Mm. And those who are here to do crime, the law must be able to take its course the same way it takes its course mm. to any other one. And we understand the cry of, um, of citizens. Uh, particularly here in the, in, in the city of Jobek, because I've seen a lot of um, floods where you can't even get in. Mm. Hillbrow is another example. It, it, it is absurd, and uh, the law enforcement agencies have got to take responsibility. Mm. But not only the law enforcement agencies, the, the citizens themselves must begin to assist in dealing with this matter, because... Mm. We have learned uh, lately that there is a scam of people who voluntarily give themselves to get married to foreigners so that they, they get their IDs and they get paid a certain amount of money. So those were some of the issues at the home affairs that, that you found? Those are some of the issues. So it, it is quite unacceptable and we've got to conscientize citizens that we have a responsibility uh, to take care of. but. Also, we have committed to build a particular society. So in building this society that we envisage, we've got to move together with, um, with our citizens in ensuring that we achieve those, uh, those objectives. And we're going to talk about how citizens can do that, because as we've seen, it can go horribly wrong as well if the citizens don't feel that they're getting the support from SAPs and authorities, how badly that can go wrong. So we're going to unpack that a little bit later uh, with Mr. Bongani Bongo. By the way, if you want to tweet us any comments, any questions, it's your show as well. Uh, tweet us at ENCA. Use the hashtag the SA Morning. Uh, Bongani Bongo is going to stay with us uh, for most of the hour. So any comments, questions? Uh, he's an open book today, he tells us. Uh, so we'll uh, go back to him again a little later. But can we just...